Oh, then when they, the, the new owners at that point sell it, they, they can... Then, then it becomes a full fair market yeah. value. But the, the, the difference in what was made from the, the affordable price to the fair market price comes back to the town for affordable housing purposes. Now, uh, so then you lose the unit, but right. you, you take you know, which, which brings up something that uh, I think we should put on our agenda out there is a meeting with the CPC associated with the fact that the census is taking place and we will make an adjustment we will have a requirement for the 10% is going to change. It's going to change as a result of the 406 units that were put in over here. Right. The requirement is uh, going to go up 40 units. with whatever other growth took place. Right. And uh, I, I think that it would be worthwhile having a discussion with the CPC on how best to address that issue. Because my understanding, I mean, when we were trying to go from 2% to 10%, I mean, there wasn't much we could do except any old 40 B that came along and try to put as many restrictions on as possible but I think we're in a position now where we may be able to pick and choose but we ought to have a plan in place right. because when the economy picks up again you know the right. people will be moving in to deal with it and that doesn't that won't catch up with us with us for probably 2012, year and a half, right? two years 2012 is when the census data yeah. finally is accumulated and then the count takes place and then you're required right. to meet the 10 percent threshold again of whatever that is yes we know what percentage effect this has on the overall 40b the one unit one unit negligible no that's negligible okay. but the uh, 400 and something units plus was you. whatever was built is you know, 10 percent of that is 40. as soon as we met our 10 percent goal with this particular uh, development over here uh, mm -hmm. that got us to our 10 percent threshold got us over the 10 percent but in doing so we picked up 400 units so 10 percent of that is 40 units yeah plus from the time that uh, you know that yeah, the then, reference point was a few years ago yeah, up to 2012, 2012 there's been other development in town yeah. so it's more than 40 that. units so uh, so my guess is that we will still have some sort of an obligation in order to maintain the 10 percent or meet the 10 percent threshold Right now we're coming through 2012, uh, so we're actually somewhat immune to 40B applications at this point. Mm -hmm. And after that number is uh, certified, we're again open to uh, applications we unless we have some sort of a plan. plan we in should place. take and Definitely. put a plan in place because Absolutely. I'd rather be in the driver's seat rather than what happened. Yep. Fast. On the same page. Uh, yeah, we, we spent a lot of time chasing our tail. Uh, we don't pay a fee to this. No, chapa, right? no, no. no. The, the developer of the property pays the fee to Chapa. Okay. So you don't see us wanting to acquire this property. I, I don't, don't see us in that in anybody? that position. No, just as long. As, I mean, the housing authority in the past, have, you don't want. some places would maybe step up to the plate and purchase the unit and put it into their inventory of affordable housing. But unfortunately, this they're funded through state and federal monies. Yeah. Uh, which are not available. We haven't had any expansion of affordable public, public affordable housing in North Reading since uh, 1970 well, something. You see the most adverse run. impact. I right. see. Yeah. yeah. Jeff. Yeah. Uh, we don't have to sell the property, though, right? We don't. We don't. We want do not. After a certain period of time, if we can't find anybody, if it's not in our best interest to sell the property, it's not our property. Oh, no, we're, we're not, not, not going to take possession of it. Unless we right. choose to purchase it for right. 166000 right. the town isn't going to take possession. What happens is the timelines move on, and then the owner of the property has the right to try and sell it at fair market value. And it's no longer considered oh, okay. an affordable Okay, I misunderstood that. Okay, okay. We get the difference. And then we get the difference. Right. The Between only way I would consider it is if you had a, an adverse impact on us, which you just said it's negligible. No, right? there's Nothing. no. no. Well. And I almost encourage that it doesn't sell, and hopefully they get a $300,000. I mean, so. See, I would encourage the housing authority, if they had the funding, to go get the funding, to purchase it. You know, and, and keep it in the inventory because that was the whole purpose of that project and the only reason that it neighborhood was impacted right. was because of the 40B. Um, you know, yeah, but again, that's an age time, restricted unit. It's also an age restricted unit. There's going to be a bunch of these that come I up. I know. Yeah, you know, it's also an age restricted unit. It's right. not as though it's just straight affordable housing where you can put a low water income family It's in 55 there. and older. It's 55 right? and older. So, uh, so it's a restricted unit. <clears throat> Next. Next. Um, You've received from council, town council, uh, copies of the changes to the open meeting law, which are effective on July 1. I thought, uh, didn't it get pushed out? No. no there's talk. There's, there's talk about talk. it. Talk. Okay. okay. Yeah. So um, we are intending to fully comply with the law beginning July 1. Um, 
operating in the understanding that if legislative relief comes along, that's wonderful. If it doesn't, we need to comply with the law. Um, Barbara Stats, the town clerk, is coordinating all the efforts with departments, boards, and committees. I think she would um, previously updated you on that. Um, however, uh, we also need, to, we got the word out to the department heads that uh, those who work with boards and committees need to be especially diligent in making sure that there's compliance. And you have a brief summary provided by council that shows you the 10 different changes in the law. There's some pretty significant changes, as you can see from where we've been in the past. Michael? Uh, a few weekends ago, Jeff and I had the opportunity to go to a presentation by Robert Nas or Nasdor. He's the director for the Division of Open Government under the Attorney General's Office who presented this information. Uh, he's really the one that's in charge of the whole thing. And we brought the information back. I presented it to Barbara and her staff. Um, and he said their goal was not to cost the towns money. Then try not to put things in place that cost money. And, and Jeff, you can jump in here if you want. He says, you know, common sense, open mind, meet the intent, but don't break the bank on trying to beat the intent. For example, when they say posting 24 hours, the, most towns are basically taking a white binder book, putting it in a box somewhere outside so somebody can walk up to town hall or walk up to the police station, open up this box, look through, see what's in there, close it 24-7. That, that, that meets the letter of that law. That's it. We don't need a big bulb board out there, something flashy lights, something automated, a big TV or something that people have access to. You don't need that. Um, and there's many more things that I shared with Barbara in regards to that um, that I think we just have to take a deep breath, try to find the best way to meet the intent without costing a lot of money. And what that's what he said. What was his response in relation to uh, Internet access to information and posting there? He, he says do it. Well, you do it. But, but doesn't satisfy but the doesn't requirement. satisfy it. Right. <laughs> No, right. but putting a book out there by having both yeah. does satisfy. It was the it was I the, would, would the fundamental. It, it was it was just the the old fashioned way of doing things. Just make sure it's accessible physically uh, to the people, and by having the box, like the example that he used, uh, uh, meets meets that standard. As, as Mike Mike mentioned, you can put any bells and whistles you want on after that, but they won't really matter. The structure so is going to be some he was also saying about um, uh, about the going into executive session that we don't have to come back out of executive session and, uh, into regular session unless we have a purpose to come back to regular session. So I know normally we come back to- It's been our to practice, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry? It's been our practice. It's been our practice, yeah. So we don't, we don't have to do that. And, and the other thing is uh, that I, and I asked him a couple questions. We can book our meetings a year in advance. He has no problem with that. But the key is, I think it's, I forget the amount of days. You can't count the weekends anymore. That's no, you can't. But you have, uh, I think it's 48, 48 hours, hours right. in advance. You have to bring, put out a list of topics, not an agenda. And I asked him this question specifically. He said to me, no, a list of topics. That means put two or three items down that you th that, that you consider. that has to be on the posting of the meeting. Your agenda could have 15 things on it. As you get to the date of your meeting, you could add three or four, maybe even seven things. But as long as you have a list of topics that you plan to talk about and post that 48 hours in advance, that meets the intent. That's why they use the word specifically, list of topics, not agenda. Well, he was very, and I yeah, asked It doesn't preclude the board from something coming up to, to put something on the agenda. That wasn't right. necessarily posted on Thursday. You can't talk about it Monday. Right. You can't. That's right, you right. can't. That hasn't changed. Greg, it might be uh, worthwhile. I know we've got a busy meeting scheduled through this month uh, and uh, into the first meeting of uh, July, but maybe at some point I'd like to have Barbara come in and tell us, tell the board what changes she implemented to meet the uh, regulation. It'll be a check and balance on going overboard, and also, since we're responsible, uh, that uh, we've had an opportunity to vet the changes that were made to make sure we're in compliance. Does that make sense? Speak up if it doesn't. That's fine. Sean. And along those same lines, I know Copeland and Page, what I saw here, offers free seminars too, or training. Yeah, I saw that. 
exactly. It may make sense to have them here with Barbara as we go over what she's implemented. Well, I would think the free seminar would be more uh, valuable to the employees in the town hall. In the boards. Yeah. In the boards. boards. Yes, yes, yes. I think we should take them up on that. And one last thing. Whoever yeah, plays in, we, we should take them up on that. Uh, yes, Michael. Uh, one last thing on this. Um, you mentioned at our last meeting, prior to town meeting, that you would um, like to get more information on this laser fish that the town already purchased and that we pay for a site license on annually that's not implemented and executed. Uh, can we have th that brought up at that meeting when Barbara comes and see where we are with that and, and what potential, how that software we've already invested in maybe could help facilitate getting some of this stuff taken care of? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, Greg? I, I, I would just think, I don't think that needs to necessarily be, be vetted here with the board. I think that's an administrative function between the administrator and his department head to assure that certain programs You're are talking about the we micro sure, yeah, yeah, that we've already purchased and, I mean, it, it, it may get to that point, but I think let the administrator handle with his department head first and report back to us rather than all the department heads in front of us. I, I, I've spoken uh -huh. to, yeah. I've spoken to Greg on that issue and the IT issue where you know, understaffing has prevented stuff that's been sitting around getting rolled out. Yep. And we need to deal that's with that issue. That's perfectly fine with me. I just, want, I just want to move forward. I think technology, it, we need more technology in this town. We, we've made solve. quantum leaps over the last five years. Uh, we, no doubt we have a way to go, but let me no, we do have a long way to go. We have a long way. Mike, Mike is right. But, but if you look at where we were, just a short while yeah, ago. He, he was <laughs> <into> <laughs> yeah, paying attention. You would have a greater then, appreciation I, for where we are today and, and, uh, and how the staff has responded uh, fairly well in a short period of time. And, a lot and of sure progress has been made. Forward too. So. Uh, Greg, uh, anything else? Uh, yeah. Just the last item on my agenda. I'm going to skip over number seven, which is on the back. We've already talked about the uh, board's meeting schedule. What number six? Uh, but number six, I'm going to, I'm going to tackle right now. Okay. Um, you have a, uh, a packet that's been prepared by the Director of Veteran Services. It looks like this. And uh, she had uh, submitted this and, and, and wanted to provide information about a concept for an, a welcome home sign for North Reading soldiers uh, to be permanently erected on the town common. Again, subject to review and approval of the Historic District Commission, but um, in going through the packet, it would not only be a sign uh, welcoming home uh, uh, soldiers, but it would also inform the public about ongoing activities relating to uh, events such <coughs> as Veterans Day, Memorial Day, or any other veterans recognition uh, I, uh, issues of significance in the community is if you go through the proposal it's it's quite well thought out in terms of uh, in my judgment quite well thought out in terms of uh, detail with, with, with the plan um, my thought was is to, to give you an opportunity to take a look at it I don't have a problem with it but um, I, I want the board to be aware of it because nothing will be done obviously until this process goes on a bit further but I, I wanted you to introduce the concept to the board. I want you to be aware of the fact that uh, the request has been submitted to the Historic District Commission. Um, however, nothing will happen um, pending your review and your comments because I think that that's important to preserve the character of the town. But I, I do think that this is something that uh, would be a nice thing to have in the community. It does give it a sense of strong sense of community in town. The, the common is in the middle of the historic district. Do I have to go yeah. vet it with the historic district oh, yeah. commission too? Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, I'm not opposed to standing in the way of it just progressing. The location, I suppose, I'm not exactly sure where they would put it on the common that would make sense. But I'm wait, <laughs> wait for a proposal from them. Right. Mike? I met I met with Sue on this, and um, they're talking about. I believe she mentioned when you, if you're at Ryers, coming down Havel Street, at the light, sort of diagonally across on the right, as you enter into the common area, right in that area, that's nothing really there. Uh, 
actually dips down a little bit in that area. Down in the gazebo, in that area? Before, way before. Right in the corner. Posting and 